Hello YouTube! My name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Parsec on Android. They just released a big update that gives it a brand new look, very similar to the PC, and they've added some new options. So we're going to see what that's all about. To do this, we're going to be using our Nexus 7 Android tablet. It's a mid-range tablet with a 1080p screen and with 5GHz Wi-Fi, so it should work pretty well, and we'll see how that goes with Parsec. This is what Parsec now looks like on Android. You can access settings much in the same way that you do on the PC, and you'll have full access to your accounts and to things like security and your password. Parsec on Android now also supports themes, and you can freely switch between them. The Computer tab is where all the magic happens. You can switch between different quality levels, and you can change between different resolutions and bandwidths. This is where we ran into our first problem while using the new Android app. Every time that we would tap on a drop-down menu, it would bring up the keyboard, which isn't game-breaking, but is a little bit annoying. Parsec has a brand new controller mapping function built into the Android app, so we decided to test that next. I can happily report that this went quite well, and it solved some controller-based problems that we had with the old version of the app. Now it was time to test some games, and this is where we had our first real problem. At 1080p, the video stream looked great, but lagged about 2 seconds behind real time. With that said, the controller itself actually had really low latency. If we watched our computer screen and played with the controller that was connected to the tablet, there was almost no latency whatsoever. It looked like we were playing natively, so that's encouraging, but the video itself on the tablet lagged behind quite a bit. It was time to make some changes. We headed back into settings and set everything to their lowest reasonable levels. So that means lowest latency, 10 megabits per second for the bandwidth, and 720p for the resolution. This time, Steam itself looked great. It matched what we saw on our computer screen, there wasn't any noticeable lag, and it felt really good. Unfortunately, as soon as we entered a game, the problem was back again. So same thing as before, the controller input latency was really low, so as we moved the controller, it felt really good if we looked at the computer screen, but the video lagged about two seconds behind real time, and that's with all the streaming settings set to their lowest reasonable levels. Altogether, this update is a step in the right direction. The new interface looks incredible, and they fixed some outstanding issues that affected controllers. However, there are still some opportunities. They need to fix the drop-down menu problem, and the video needs to be tweaked a little bit more to reduce latency. It's worth mentioning that we did test the new Parsec app on the NVIDIA Shield, and it still can't be completely navigated with the controller, which kind of defeats the purpose. The Shield is all about playing from the couch, and Parsec isn't quite ready for that yet. Keep in mind that Parsec on Android is still in beta. They have more plans for it, and they're committed to bringing it to the same level that we enjoy today on the PC. And that's it for this video. If you test Parsec on Android, we'd love to hear about your experience. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you're new to our channel, you might consider subscribing. We produce a lot of videos that are all about game streaming and cloud gaming, and this is the best place to find all the information that you'll need to have a good experience. And until next time, my name is Josh, and you guys have a good one.